Father, we are sure thankful for you. We are grateful to get to spend time together this evening, gathered together in your presence with you. Father, we ask for you to open our minds. We ask for you to, to fill our hearts with your goodness and then to allow you to flow in and through us as we anticipate and we look to the week ahead today. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, man, it's good to see everybody. Y'all doing okay? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Good. Well, it's really good. It's good to gather together. Good to enjoy time as we spend time together. So here at the very beginning, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of guys here in just a second. And we're going to get to come up and we're going to pray over them here in just a few minutes. And then whenever we finish praying over them, kids, K through 2, you guys are going to head over here uh, to Mr. Joel. He's got some stuff for you. And then kids, K uh, 3 through 5, you're going to head right on over here to Miss Heather. She's got stuff for you guys over there. And so let me introduce you to these guys so that we can pray over them because there's an exciting thing happening. And we want to make sure that we get to encourage these guys along the way. Uh, Jacob, you and Kyle, y'all come up here and come see me. This is Jacob Phelps and Kyle Horton, and these two guys are going to get to ch start a church uh, in outside of outside of Houston here in 2020. And so, yeah, right. Now, the thing that you need to know about Jacob and I is we go back all the way to we were probably uh, born. Uh, so, uh, something along those lines, uh, we both knew each other from Gainesville, Texas, which you guys know I lived the first half of my childhood uh, in Gainesville and then moved to Waco, sick of bears. I know, right? Always, always, always. One of these days, I'm going to get a clap for Baylor here in just a second, but anyway, yeah, thank you. These guys will clap for Baylor, don't you? Oh, man, gosh. Hey, you can sit down. You know? <laughs> just kidding. No. And so Kyle and I, we know each other from Huddo. And uh, so he was working with the student pastor at Huddo Baptist before I became the student pastor at Huddo Baptist. So our paths kind of did this number, but they've done this number through the years. You guys know how that works. And so, so Jacob and Kyle got to know each other and uh, through church. And they are now in a cool kind of way that God weaves the web of relationship. They are now on their way uh, to, to outside of Houston in the Tomball area. And they're going to be starting One Hope Fellowship this next year. And we were very excited for this. So they've come to kind of check you out this evening and to watch and see what's going on and to learn from us and the things we've learned over the last 10 years. And, uh, and then we get to champion them and cheer them on as they get started this next year. And so the way we know how to do that best is to pray over them right now as they're getting their core team together. They're getting all this stuff together. So can we just gather around them and let's pray over them as they get started? All right, guys. So y'all get on back to those seats. Get there, get there quickly, get there quickly. You're doing great. All right, so how many of you guys know somebody who, if they had the chance, they would control you? Anybody know somebody? Just raise your hand right quick. If they had the opportunity to control you in their life, do you know somebody who would try to control you? Just raise your hand nice and high. just want to see if I still have control. Just raise your hand nice and high, right? Yeah, everybody's like, stop it, cook, quit. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. We all know somebody that if they could, if they could tell you what to do with your life, they would totally do it. If, 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 they, would, if they could have control over you and how you make decisions, they would do it. It may be a co-worker. It may be, it may be a friend or somebody you've considered a friend for a long time. It may be a child. A child might be willing to control you if they have the opportunity. Who knows? Uh, the reality is, is that we all have people. There's no doubt every single one of us have people in our lives that, quite frankly, we would rather not have to deal with because it would just be a lot easier. It would be a lot easier. We'd have a lot less gray hair because the reality is that, man, they're just hard to handle. There are people that are hard to live life with. But yet, here we are, Christ followers, on Surf Sunday, where we're talking about bringing joy to people who are far from God. And we know that's our role. That as Christ followers, we are to bring joy to people. We allow the Spirit of God to manifest His joy in and through us so that other people get to experience this joy that we have experienced in our lives. It's hard. It's difficult to do this. Now, obviously, we find ourselves going, well, you know, I mean, that's one thing, Dave, those people who are far from God. Those people who are Christians, you're on your own, right? You've got to figure it out on yourself. But the reality is no, because then here we are as Christ followers. Scripture, we know, says that we're going to be known by our love. 
The way that we love one another, the way that we care for one another, we support one another, we live life alongside one another, and so we're just not off the hook. People who are hard to handle, people who are knuckleheads, people who are difficult, man, we get the privilege, and I call it a privilege because it is, we get the privilege of caring for them, perhaps especially in those moments that, man, we just don't want to. And so today, we call these people manipulators. These are people who, if they could manipulate you in your life, they would totally do it. They totally would. And so this week, this evening, tonight, what we get to talk about is to how to love people enough to break the power of manipulation through establishing healthy boundaries. Boundaries are very, very important in our lives because we find lots of freedom within those boundaries. And so tonight, what I hope that you can get in your mind is that we can break the power of manipulation. People don't have to manipulate you. You as a Christ follower, that you love people, and you are grace-filled, and you are mercy-filled, and you long for the best in people. And sometimes it can feel like in that moment, you've got to get run over. Well, the reality is that's not the truth. In fact, sometimes the way that we can care for people, it's even more powerful and more gospel-centered, more effective if we make sure we don't get run over and we're able to establish these healthy boundaries by loving people enough to have them. So God's got a lot to say about manipulators. He's got a lot to say about it. And there's story after story in Scripture um, about this manipulation that takes place. I mean, you can, in the book of Mark, you've got two women that manipulated Herod in order to get John the Baptist's head on a platter. Now, that's a pretty grave manipulation there, of course. But you've also got, in Genesis 25, you've got Jason, Jacob manipulating Esau in order to get the birthright so that he's the top dog. So you have that manipulation. And then, of course, you've got in Judges 16, you've got Delilah manipulating Samson with that good old manipulation of, if you love me, you'll tell me. If you love me, you'll, you know, and there it is. It's the age old. It's been around forever. This is not new. She says to him, how can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you've made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. This is that better to live on the corner of a rooftop than with a nagging wife kind of thing, right? This is it. Good old fashioned, if you love me, you'll tell me the secret of your strength. It's a trick. It's a manipulation. And man, it's hard. It's hard to care for people. So through these examples I've given, there's just kind of some common tactics, some common things that manipulators use. I mean, one thing they use is flattery, right? You have the, the wordsmiths that are out there. That, man, they know, how to, they know how to tell you. You know, I mean, it's the, it's the person in your, in your work, maybe, that's kissing up to the boss and is like, man, great, great presentation, boss. You're doing great, man. Have you lost weight recently and all these kinds of things? And just trying to do everything they can in order to get a leg up in the company. Flattery is one of those things that happens all the time. Threats, that's another one. This is a common tactic of manipulator. This was a pretty ugly one. This is that whole, if you do this, you'll regret it. Or if you don't do this, you'll regret it. This is the person who, they hang up the phone on you without saying goodbye and things like that because they just get angry. And I realize teenagers are like, hang up the phone, what do you mean? This means that they won't respond to you in text messages. That's what we mean by that. <laughs> and so, so whenever that happens, they stop talking uh, to you or they just, they just pretend like they're not going to be your friend anymore. They're just not going to be your friend anymore. And so if you just, I, just can't, I can't be friends with you anymore. This is these, these threats that get made um, that manipulators tend to use. And then, of course, there's the good old-fashioned guilt. And this may be the most common used, which is guilt. This is that after all I've done for you, I've done so much for you, and now you won't do this for me. Or there's this, there, there's, there's the, uh, obviously there the, the, I thought we were close. And then this is the one where it's, it, your friends that, that aren't Christ followers, this would be the, you know, I thought you were a Christian. You know, and so there's this guilt thing that's there, and man, we find ourselves, well, gosh, I can't, I can't say no, or I can't, I don't know about this kind of thing. And so there's this guilt factor that tends to, that tends to be brought down on people. So the thing is, is that, man, here we sit, and we long to put a good taste in people's mouths. But yet sometimes it feels like in that attempt to be good news to people, we find ourselves getting run over. 
we find ourselves where we feel like we have to say yes to some things that, and we, quite frankly, would rather not have to say yes to. And some of those things may be the Lord speaking, but there's also oftentimes when, man, it's the enemy just wanting to busy up your life and make you to where you're ineffective in a lot of things rather than really effective in a few things. And so there's this power of manipulation. Tonight, you can. You can break this power of manipulation. And so there's three prayers that we're going to encourage us to, to, to pray this evening. It's really simple, and, and, and it's, not, it's not complex, but obviously the way this, this shows up in our lives, it can become very complex. And the first one is this. God, help me recognize when somebody's trying to manipulate me. Help me recognize it. And so if you're sitting in this room, and you're like, you know what, Danny? I don't know Jesus, and Christians are the worst at this. I want to encourage you, pray this prayer. Pray this prayer. Christians are the ones. They're trying to make me, they're trying to make me believe in Jesus. Pray this prayer. God, help me recognize when someone is trying to manipulate me. Because Jesus did. Listen to this story here. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. See, this was the church at the time, right? And that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then Peter... We all know him as a, as a pretty remarkable dude. Peter took him aside because this is a tactic of manipulators. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. See, P Peter took Jesus aside. Why? Because manipulators lose power in crowds. Whenever we're in a crowd of people, the manipulator doesn't have power over you in that moment. And so, therefore, the manipulator will say, hey, come over here for just a second. To separate you from the crowd. Now, you see Peter here. I'm like, Dan, I can't believe you're talking about Peter like this. Well, the reality is Peter didn't mean harm in this moment. Peter just wanted for Jesus. He wanted his plan for Jesus. Peter wanted his plan for Jesus' life rather than Jesus' plan for Jesus' life. And so, as well-meaning as he may be, it didn't really mean harm for Jesus. The reality is, though, he was thinking more of himself than he was for Jesus, which is what manipulators typically do. And so you may be sitting there going, but wait a minute, Danny, we got Christ followers that are supposed to be, be good and supposed to be doing these things. Why in the world, are, wait, how can I trust? Well, you can trust these things because how do you know you're being manipulated? Listen to these things here. So how you know you're being manipulated is if you often feel guilty and find it hard to say no. I know there's Christians in the room here, you guys that love Jesus, you're like, man, Danny, this is so me. There are so many times I'm sitting here going, man, I just can't not say yes. I have to say no. And I can't say no. But I feel like I should say no. But I can't say no because then they, it may hurt their feelings. And then, and then they may not fall in love with Jesus. And then all these things. Man, we're putting a lot of stake on us in this moment, aren't we? We've got to be careful here. And so how do you know if you're being manipulated? If somebody's really genuinely trying to manipulate you, you find yourself feeling really guilty and finding it hard to say no to them. And this happens all the time. Many of you guys experience this on a regular basis. Another thing that happens is you find yourself compromising your values in order to please other people. You know, students, this may be a thing where you have a standard of the kind of movies you're watching and the kind of movies you're not watching. But yet the person who is supposed to be your friend is giving you a really hard time. And you find yourself not being able to say no to a specific movie that you really don't want to watch. And then you end up compromising your values in order to please them. So these are common tactics of manipulators. Don't let it happen. We can't be doing this. Adults, the same thing is true. There are so many people that are going to ask and ask and ask of us. We've got to be careful to not... Let this become a compromise of the values, a compromise of a family, a compromise of a relationship in order to please this person. And so we've got to ask God because, man, this just sounds impossible to know the line, doesn't it? It sounds impossible to me. How do I know? Because there are things that I can't say no to that I know are good things. They're what God wants for me. And I just can't say no to that, even though I honestly would like to because it make my life easier. But yet then there's this person here, but they don't know Jesus, but yet I want them to know Jesus. How am I supposed to know? Well, this is why we say you've got to pray this prayer. God, help me recognize. 
Help me recognize when someone is trying to manipulate me because I can't see it for myself. So God, help me recognize when someone's trying to manipulate me. The second prayer is this. God, empower me to place, to put in place healthy boundaries. Empower me. Help me discover my voice. Help me to know that I have a voice and I can stand on my two feet on the foundation of who you are and I can say, I don't know. i got to put some boundaries in place. You know, I mean, a perfect example of this is your child throwing a fit, right? Your child throwing a fit in order to try to get what they want. This is a beautiful moment for you to have a healthy boundary in place. A child is a classic manipulator, are they not? I mean, they can do everything they can to push buttons, they can do everything they can to turn the knife, they can do all kinds of stuff, turn on the waterworks, all those things, to try to make you look like a fool at Walmart and everything. You know, they go nuts, and it's totally on purpose, because they want to get what they want. And that's when you as a parent got to say, man, you can throw a fit all you want, but you are not getting what you want. We'll leave this car right here, we're going to head right on out, because I love you too much to let you be like that. I love you too much to let you think you can manipulate me. I love you too much. Looking at a child who doesn't want to go to the family reunion with you, because those are always exhilarating, right? They don't want to go with you, and so, but there they are. You're like, hey, look, you know what? I know you don't like it. So you're giving them something, right? I know you don't like it, but this is what we've decided as a family we're going to do. And so this is what we're going to do. You can throw a fit all you want, but you're going to get in the car, and we're going. We've got to establish some healthy boundaries. This is, children, that's, that's kind of the easy one, even though it's hard to, to actually uh, enact, right? we got relationships. Oh my gosh, man, how many of you guys have criers in your life that, man, they'll cry, they'll pout, they'll do all these kinds of things to try to get what they, what, to get you to do what they want. you got people in your life like this, that, man, they'll turn things on. Maybe they might even walk out on you. Speed off in their car. They do crazy things like that where you're thinking, man, don't do that. This is a moment where we get to look at them and say, I love you too much to let you control me. I love you too much. I mean, we got church relationships too, don't we? Or man, you find somebody maybe complaining about something or whatever the case may be. Man, could you please, like when this is happening, because we just don't really have any room for this and we don't really deal with this a whole lot, but, but when people are complaining, this is a beautiful moment for you to say, man, I hear you. I hear you. I love you. And I take into consideration what you're saying, but what you have to remember is, is that there is never one person that will ever change the course of the direction for the church, not even me. We don't ever have one person that changes the course of direction for our church. And so the reality is that complaints can happen and we have room for that. But through that relationship, we can we work through that where this healthy boundary is there. We're able to say, man, no, we're looking for health here. And I love you too much to let this thought process continue building in you. You got a theme here, right? I love you too much to let you and fill in the blank. I love you too much to let you destroy your life. I love you too much to let you try to control me. I love you too much to let you try to control them. I love you too much. This is a huge thing. This is Jesus. This is who he is. Because here's the hard truth for each of us. This is a very important truth for us to grasp. This hard truth. You ready? If someone else has control, and the little parentheses is of us, if someone else has control, we are guilty of the sin of idolatry because we've just elevated them over and above God the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. These are the stakes we're playing with. Just like we talked about the sin of omission this last week, where if we're just not thinking about the plight of humanity on this planet, it's actually sinful because we know about it. And so this same thing, if someone else has control of us, even in our well-meaningness, we long to care for people. We want to we please them. We want them to fall in love with Jesus. But if we let them have control of us, we are guilty in that moment of the sin of idolatry. So something that we might think is very positive actually is sinful. So do you see how important it is that your children don't control you? 
You see how important it is that you don't let somebody who doesn't know Jesus control you? You know how important it is that you don't let somebody who knows Jesus control you? Can you see this? This is so important because we don't want to be guilty of the sin of idolatry because we long for God the Father to be the most important relationship that we have. And so our second prayer is, God, empower me to put up healthy boundaries. <laughs> healthy boundaries. And the third prayer is this. And this is what it boils down to. Because here's where it starts. God, help me see my own need to control. Help me to surrender everything to you. Because, see, it's really easy to look at other people and go, man, they're trying to control me. They're trying to control me. They're trying to control me. You know why it bothers you so much? Because you wish you could control them. There it is, right? I can't stand you telling me what to do. I can't stand you telling me what to do. Man, in this moment, I'm going to tell you what to do. God, help me see my own need to control and to surrender everything to you because the truth is we all have a tendency to control or to manipulate. We all have this tendency. I mean, ask Rachel, my wife Rachel, ask her. I'm a control freak. Man, many of you guys know this. I'm a control freak. I have this thought process of how things are supposed to go, and man, I just long for them to go there. It's not because it's, a, it's, a, it's this um, malice thought process. But it just genuinely is. I long for what's best. I long for what's best. And in my mind, this is what's best. So let's go. And Rachel's like, man, if it's not your way, it's wrong. Huh, Cook? She didn't call me Cook. Sweetness. Things like that. Anyway. If it's not your way, it's, it's wrong, huh? You can ask people that I work with, our pastors, our staff. Man, I have an idea of how these things are supposed to go. And I long for it to go these directions and all these kind of things. You can ask all of them. I have this OCD thing going on and everything where everything's got to be in a number system and all this kind of stuff and all this thing. There's a specific way. I don't mean harm by it by any means. I would never mean harm because honestly my thought process is very good. It's just easy to find myself wanting my plan for your life. It's really easy for me to go, man, I can see, man, I long for, for your life to be this way and and then I get reminded of Scripture. And then I get reminded of what Jesus said to Simon Peter as he says, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but you have in mind the things of men. See, this is, this is what, how Jesus responded. He called Peter Satan. I don't suggest you start calling your wife Satan if she's <laughs> trying to tell you what you need to do, okay? I don't suggest that, but what I do suggest is for us to try to identify and to see, man, where am I trying to control other people? Because who is the one person we can control on this earth? Us. That's the one person. We can control us. And so God, help me see my own need to control and to surrender everything to you. We all have a tendency to control or to manipulate.